Hello and welcome back to White Lines Football. Lewis here today again for another episode of Lewis's Lounge. And today we're going to be talking about another sorry subject for us Gillingham fans after talking about Cody McDonald leaving on the podcast the other day as Bradley Dack and Billy Knott have both left Gillingham. Now, I want to start off by talking about Bradley Dack. I'm going to go through them both individually. Now, Dack joined the club in 2010 in the youth setup from Charlton Athletic. Uh, ironically, that was his last game in a Jill shirt. We lost 3-0 and he was jeered by a few Jills fans, a few stupid Jills fans, but hopefully he has better memories than that at the club. Uh, he signed his first pro deal in 2012 and apart from that, the rest is history. He kicked into life after the departure of Peter Taylor, um, often played out left by Peter Taylor when his best position was behind the strikers, uh, especially just under Justin Edinburgh. He flourished... Um, Last season, he didn't have the best seasons, but the year before that, he was, of course, League One Player of the Year. Now, uh, he's going to be very hard to replace, but he did. Uh, we did get a two hundred, uh, so, sorry, seven hundred and fifty thousand pound fee for him with potential add-ons in the future. Now, I think that's a really good deal. Uh, we rejected two point five million pounds reportedly from Bristol City last season at the end of last season. Um, when he was in sort of the form of his life, really. I mean, he won League, what, League, uh, yeah, League One Player of the Year. Um, he was scoring for fun and that money would have done very good for the club but we kept him for the promotion push that of course never came uh, we started off the season well of course we went downhill as you know if you watch the videos on the channel and we eventually avoided relegation on the last day now um, he wasn't as good as he was the season before but he was very good still uh, it was the last year of his contract he had one year left after uh, last season so of course we didn't want to risk losing him for free when we weren't particularly going to be having that promotion push this season more a season of solidarity in ahead and it'd be a shame to lose someone of such talent for free the year after because I think it's fair to say he wouldn't join because he wanted to play higher um, yeah he won player of the season uh, in our season we came ninth I believe and it was very unfortunate we missed out so yeah he showed his talent um, undoubted, undoubted talent he even got young player of the year this year uh, he showed his undoubted talent on so many occasions and he's definitely going to be missed. I mean, he's 23 years old. I think he can still do very well in the future if he gets his head down, carries on playing uh, well and keeps his fitness up. He scored 31 goals in 160 games after he kicked on, um, playing behind the strikers. He scored the likes of uh, free kicks, longer goals, long distance goals. He scored all sorts of goals. Of course, that long hair he'll be famous for it was then shot, cut short. I uh, did meet him on a couple of occasions. He's a really good guy as well. As well, if you watch Jules in the Blood, Matt's interview with him, he's a really good guy. And he's, I think it was inevitable he was going to go. I mean, last year it looked like he was going to go. Uh, he stayed around the stadium on the last game of the season, saying goodbye to everyone. Uh, he stayed, and uh, people thought we were going to get a lot less fee than what we did get, but uh, we did get more. We got seven hundred fifty thousand pounds, as I've already mentioned, and. Yeah, that's quite a good deal. Uh, Paul Scully's already said not too much of it's going to go into the playing budget. It'll go into helping the club, of course, in the court case of centre play as well. Uh, any leftover money will be left for players. But yeah, I think what's important is, I know he didn't have the best of years last season, but we've got to replace his goals. We've got to replace his assists, and that's not going to come easy. Especially as his replacement, supposedly, Billy Knott, has also left the club, joining Lincoln City on a one-year deal. Uh, I think that's a free... Um, which is a real, real shame because he was still under contract to the club. He had so much good talent, as we saw in glimpses. Um, one goal in 17 games doesn't necessarily show that, but you could just tell he was so good on the ball. Uh, he was very good for Bradford. He was pivotal for them, and I'm sure he's going to be very, very good for Lincoln as well, especially in League Two. Uh, in my opinion, Billy, Char Billy not didn't get a fair chance at the club. Um, he was shipped out alone when Pennock came in. He wasn't really fancied. Uh, the way I see it is he was promised, uh, I think it's in an interview, he was promised he was going to play behind the striker. Um, obviously, that was maybe assuming Dak would leave, which never actually happened. Which, uh, I suppose in a way it's good because Dak was here, but again, Billy Knott never got his chance. There are rumours his best position was on the left side of a three, that sort of thing. But he did nearly, never really come through. There's suggestions he could have been one of the bad eggs Pennock was talking about. Pennock said he wanted to get rid of him and Billy Knott was transfer listed. Um, but could Billy Knott be one of the bad eggs? I mean, there's rumours he was on Twitter when Justin Edinburgh was the manager, uh, sulking that he was left out of the squad or something like that. But yeah, it's a shame. But I think for Billy's career, it's a good job that the deal's done and he is going to move forward in his career and hopefully climb back up the league again because I think he had very good potential. Could have been very good at Gillingham, of course. But on top of that... Uh, for Gillingham as a club, I think it's now so important that we do replace Dak slash not in that number 10 role. I mean, at the minute, 
I look at the players we've got. I mean, the midfielders we've seen right there in tight times last season. He's not necessarily got it. We've seen Lee Martin there, but he's more like his player wide. Um, obviously, you've got the likes of Stevenson in the youth team. Probably not able to play there consistently. So we don't really have anyone that can, you know, play that position consistently throughout the whole season at the minute. I'm not sure if we're going to get one in. Uh, Penix, he likes playing wingers. Um, that could that probably means a 4-4-2, I think, in my opinion. But that could, of course, be a 4-2-3-1 as well. But I think, nevertheless, it's also, it's always good to have that number 10 in. I mean, they're no, I know they're sort of luxury players and flair players, but I think it's good. it would be good to have a number 10 in because it sort of gives you another dimension. It gives you that creative ability rather than just... Um, the sort of players that are just going to do the hard work and stuff in the field. Like we've got so many of Hez and Tyler Morris, Josh Wright, people like that. I think we need that player that could sort of bring that attacking flair. That person that's going to help replace Dax goals, McDonald's goals, goals, assists, that sort of thing. But yeah, we're going to see where the money goes. I mean, we bought another striker today, Connor Wilkinson, another target man. So it looks like we're going to be playing two target men up front next season. A lot of hoofball, which might not I mean you might not need a fair flair player in that number ten role, but. Yeah, it'd been it'd be nice to have it. I mean, I'd love Billy not to have been given another chance. He seemed like a ready-made replacement, but I guess it just wasn't meant to be. I'm sure he'll do very well at Lincoln. He knows the Cowley brothers; they're very good managers, and I'm sure Lincoln will do very well next season as well. But yeah, there we go. Dak and not have moved on. So uh, Dak and McDonald have both gone now. It's not great news. Um, Nelson's on the transfer list. Right, rumours the championship. We could be losing four of our longest seven players, and that's going to be really weird around junior football club. But yeah. The players have moved on. I guess we have no choice to move on either. So we'll see where that goes. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe, comment down below. Follow all the socials. If you've got an opinion on it, I'm sure you do if you're a junior fan. Comment down below or give me a tweet at LRC Browning as well. I hope you enjoyed. Please like, subscribe. Check out Wildlands F1. Follow everything in the description. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.